Okay. Th thank you for joining. Um, uh, let me start that. I'm super excited to see how this community is growing after three years. Well, it's quite, quite incredible to, to see all the excitement into, into this yeah, group of people working with this tec technology. And so I will start talking a bit about the Citadel's next four project. Uh, with some statistics, uh, how is going the, 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 the project? Um, we, we have, in the last month, we have a peak in the usage downloads of the, of the tools, 150,000 downloads per month, quite, quite a lot. And, and okay, here there are a few numbers about, about next flow itself, uh, 150,000 lines of code. We have more than 200 releases, uh, nearly 2,000 starts on GitHub, so quite a lot of engagement with this project. And, here, here, there is a, a chart on the uh, the people are more engaging with with, the, with these two. Okay, not surprisingly, they are mostly uh, North America, Boston area, Europe, UK. Oh, so there are other people all around the world. If you if you look, and um, uh, this is a nice chart about the the, the, the history of the pull request, the, the quality and the number of pull requests into the project is increasing over time. This is a good sign. How there is more. Uh, engagement with the tool, not just using both, so contributing in the code, providing new capability. Also, this morning we see a fantastic plugin for Nextflow provided by Kill, the, Kill People. So, I'm very happy about that. And um, also, this is a good opportunity to say thank you, uh, community contributors. Uh, these are just all of them. It's possible to to mention everybody, but uh, these are maybe the, the people that most contributed in the last period. There is this guy, Eric, contributed. A new executor for Nextflow, it is IgorQ, it is a specialized uh, HPC batch scheduler. Uh, I think that is using the Finland uh, HPC data center. Manuel Emanuele Simi also contributed a nice extension for Azure Cloud. And then uh, maybe, I don't know, this guy, not even know the name, but he contributed <laughs> the support. Yeah, this is the open source. How does it work? You don't know people. <laughs> Just icon. Uh, now, the support for jobs into Kubernetes, so the, there is also a possibility now to use not just Paul to run next pro pipeline, but also job. Maybe it's a bit better. I haven't yet try, tried. Also, Adam, that we saw this morning, contributed some stuff about Google Cloud. And okay, thank you, everybody. And um, also, it's important to mention we had two important uh, sponsor contributions, one for Azure to implement support for Azure Batch. And the other for Google, for the Google Cloud batch support. So uh, I think this is also very important to, to have one side, the community support, but also having a big company like Cloud Vendor that invest into the technology because it makes more stable, make more reliable over time. And also it's important to mention that our team is growing. So Segura Labs is uh, contributing uh, more and more into Nextflow support. Now we have uh, stable contribution by Ben and Cocaine to Next local base. Abinav is not official in the Next Flow team, but also is providing a good help, a lot, a lot of good stuff. So thanks, Abinav. Thanks, guys. And um, what else? Okay, so let's start in a bit more details uh, about the new release Next Flow. Today we are uh, new version Next Flow 21.10.0. And here there is quite a lot of stuff uh, we worked in the, last in the last months. I will try to mention the most important things. Uh, we are introducing into this release. Um, okay, models. There is a little change that is uh, just confirming uh, best practice implemented by NF Core. Now we can have model defined like directory. Before the model was just a script file name, but now we can specify. We can have a directory. We can have the file, uh, the main model script. And also, for example, uh, NF Core using other metadata into this directory. And now next to add also the capability to add new local scripts. So this makes it possible to have models that have their own local, local, local script that can be imported and used into the task. Uh, and then the main difference from the language point of view is that you don't have to specify the file name anymore here, but just the directory. So this is, I think, the only change that needs to be done in Core, for example, to use this approach. Um, this is a little change, but has some interesting impact that we will see also later. And uh, so one other important uh, extension to, to Nextflow was the ability to support reserves labels. 
So resource labels is just a, a way and a structure on the next flow allow uh, you to, to use what? Uh, to associate uh, tag or labels to the underlying uh, computing platform that is going to run the task. So if I have this task that is funny, it is to resource labels. If you are running with Amazon, then this will become tags into Amazon, uh, into the job that we are running with AWS Batch or other resources. And if you are running with Kubernetes, it become Kubernetes labels, etc. So this was very uh, awaited by the community, by everybody, because it's very important to keep track of the cost in, when you are using cloud, cloud provider to run next few pipelines. And what else? Oh, there is another small ex um, feature, and also it can, can have interesting impact in the tooling in which uh, next flow, uh, uh, on which that depends. And this is a ca capability to to have the preview of the execution. So this makes it possible to run the pipeline with, to generate the, 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 the graph of the execution of all the tasks without running the actual pipeline. And this can be useful, for example, to create the, the, the chart of the pipeline using an editor and uh, 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 without executing the pipeline. So this is uh, quite interesting. Uh, also, I want, I want to like to mention this, this plugin has been contributed by Alvaro in our team. So, uh, very, very nice time, very nice job. Con con congrats, Alvaro. It was very useful to have this. And what else? Plugins. So, we have seen that uh, it's increasing the, 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 the use of plugins into Nextflow. So far, we have plugins that were more infrastructural plugins. Um, but now we uh, have also added the possibility to use plugin to extend the DSL, the language itself. Oops. Uh, this is what allows you to do. Allows you to do to create custom function operator channel factory into your next row script and to extend to provide new capability to import these uh, custom uh, elements into your script. The only change, the only change, what you have to do is to use the plugin slash keyword. This is the, the, the keyword and the only difference compared to other mod modules. Uh, and then this, your plugin name can be whatever you, you want to have. And then, oh, of course, you have to implement the plugin. And for example, here I show you how I'm creating, a, I'm using a, a custom channel factory to create some a channel with some specific logic and then with a custom operator, etc. So these are improve the capability to let know the language to extend the yeah, what you can express of writing with Nextflow pipelines. And then um, another interesting enhancement uh, is in the publish dir. Publish dir is an important directive into Nextflow that allows you basically to publish the output or, or, or the, your pipeline and we can declare a task level. Um, this allows to do what? Now we have the support for the content type and the tags. Also here we have tags and uh, allows you to associate some custom annotation with those three files, publish it into some bucket. And also the content type is that is useful to associate a specific the type of the file that you are publishing. This is useful, for example, to publish in uh, on fly with the next flow pipeline, some some report, like this case, PDF file, whatever. And they, they can be accessed directly from the web because when publishing, uh, the web server will be able to associate the correct type. So um, a small changes, but uh, can be quite useful. The, the only thing to notice is only support by AWS S3 at this point. And um, what else? Since we are talking about S3 and AWS, there's quite a lot, few improvements uh, related to AWS, AWS Batch, AWS S3 world. One is the support server-side encryption with using custom keys with the S3 buckets. This is important production environment you know, for the uh, for sensitive data. And also the ability to support anonymous uh, credential that can be needed or useful when access public data and you are not using, you don't have a uh, key because maybe you're running next from your local computer, maybe you're running into a HPC data center without using Amazon, but see you can continue to access public data. On AWS Batch, now we have also support for the shared identifier that basically essentially is a way to prioritize tasks. It is useful when multiple users share the same queue, the same AWS Batch queue, 
and so they can choose well, what priority uh, submit the jobs. Um, also an improvement on the ability to automatically retry uh, job they failed because the spotting has, has been terminated uh, and this basically next flow now delegate this completely to AWS batch and then restart the job and next flow not, is not even aware of the termination, continue to work uh, like there is no interruption. And finally, there is also the built-in integration called Commit. So basically, Code Commit is a kind of GitHub for into the AWS platform. And so now Nextflow can uh, access the code using very different uh, shared coding uh, service, like GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, Gitia, and now also Git Code Commit. And these are just the some enhancement to the uh, to the, that we are providing into this release, but still we have something interesting to, to introduce today. And this focus on, uh, on the, the usage container. Um, container in Nextflow is a key, tic -tac, key -tac technology. Uh, it's a pillar of the stack, I would like to say, maybe as being one of the first Nextflow framework, Nextflow workflow framework using container to automate and consolidate the execution data pipelines. Because at the end, what allows us to do? We allow us to create self-contained execution environment that we can run everywhere, from a single computer, HPC data center, the cloud. Why? A very simple way. The job that next to execute are encapsulated into a container instance. This makes it possible to replicate the execution very easily. So this is great, but this is not the, the complete solution to some extent, because see, there are quite a lot of problems when we use container there are a lot of pain points somehow. And first of all, we tend to use more and more uh, private registry with cloud, a different cloud, and to keep, keep, keep on the control that the condition system uh, using all these credentials. Uh, it's quite complicated. Each of these cloud providers use a different uh, authorization mechanism. You have, to, you have to interact with other team and this slow down all the process of the development the pipeline, the deployment the pipeline. It's very frustrating in some cases. Also, the, the other problem is that in the beginning, we tend to use few containers, maybe just one in which there, we had all the tools, but now modern pipeline like NF Core, and of course, RNSEQ, I counted 53 different containers. So this is quite complicated to create all these containers one, one by one and maintain them aligned into con the configuration. No, I know that uh, NF Core tend to use bio containers, but this is still not an optimal solution. Why? Because uh, this is possible only for lucky people that can work in academia or they can use public repository, but there are a lot of reality in which this is not possible, especially uh, company, regulated environment, they need to manage their own private repository. So you have this big problem to manage all these containers. And this is okay, a typical workflow when you want to create a container, it is quite frustrating activity. You have to create a Docker file, try to build, wait a building, then crash, try to fix, one more time, build, wait, crash, build, wait, crash. More and more again, until you manage to create this container, then you have to find the password, upload somewhere. So a lot of time wasted. So something very, very boring. So how we can fix this? And we work quite hard to, to, to automate all this process with this, pro with this service that we are introducing today, that is WAVE, that is basically a container provisioning service for cloud native data pipeline. And what is the main idea uh, of WAVE? The main idea of WAVE that we consider a container like a part of the pipeline. And instead of using uh, just a container image per task, we can associate into the pipeline definition also the Docker file. So you can have your model with your Docker file and then Nextflow takes care with way to assemble, provision all your container during the pipeline execution. And also a very nice important thing, I think that manage to allows you to centralize all the authentication authorization or your uh, private container registry using uh, uh, tower credentials. So we have a ecosystem, different components, Nextflow, tower, and way that allows you to, to manage all the lifecycle container into your pipeline. And this is also very important when it comes to deploy the pipeline execution, different cloud, 
because the use of centralized registry is not an optimal solution because um, if you have a registry and you run this in different cloud or different region, the same cloud, you have to transfer in this container all around the different region. This will have a huge cost, slow down the execution, you have to replicate this image, is a mess. And standard here is that we can replicate the cache, the images, the container images layer into the region where the pipeline is running. So automate all this process, essentially. So there is quite a lot of stuff. And, oh, and um, this is basically a chart of the main components into this, uh, into this system. Essentially what is happening now in Nextflow as a plugin for Wave that allows you to um, understand what is the container your task, your pipeline is going to use. And instead of going directly into the registry to use the container, we can go through the Wave service. So, the wave service is a kind of mediator between Nextflow and the registry and tower for the credential. And this allows you either or to create container on the fly, authenticate container if you already have this container a bit, also argument container. So this, this word is continuing to come out today. We will talk, I will talk more about container augmentation later. And um, yeah, since there is quite a lot of stuff, I prefer to, to show you how does it work in practice, this, the, the, this system. And I created uh, a few examples that you can access into this repository. Uh, I think it should be this one. Segura Labs Wave Showcase. You can replicate dependently if you want later or another day. Um, and then, for example, here I have an example that shows how we can access uh, a private container that uh, I have my Docker, Docker uh, repository just to see the content, this directory is not big, yeah. And the script is very simple. They just process full. This is a private container that is my secret container that I want to run this, this job, this script that is coming from this container. So if I try and run this with Nextflow uh, without doing anything, this is just going to fail because I'm not authenticated. I have no access to this uh, remote repository. It's true that I could authenticate this. Oops, this is what I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Maybe I will not. I need to log out. I need also to remove the local cache of this container. Click. And let's try it again. Okay. Oh, where is? Yeah, maybe it should fail. There it is. It should fail because I don't have access to to this container repository. Um, but the difference now that now I log it out, I have no access. Okay, you you can wonder. Okay, but you can log in and to access the container. The problem is that. Okay, the local computer, I can log in with Docker X container, but when I want to deploy this a distributed HPC batch scheduler, I cannot log in in each node. Or when I want to deploy in AWS batch, there is well, uh, quite a complicated uh, way to set up this credential into the batch infrastructure. Instead, now I have another option that is with Wave that allows me to take the keys from Tower. And now it's going to fail again because I didn't put the key into tower. So let's jump back into tower. Here I can jump my credential. I can add my Docker keys. Maybe. Okay. Provider, I will choose container registry, my username, and then my password. Yeah, I can put Docker IO, I can leave even empty, the same in this case. Okay, the second thing that I have to do is take my token. I already have my token, my, my computer. If you don't have, you just create a new token and then you create or you put into the next row configuration file basically here. And here I could say the token that I created into tower. Now I have, I'm taking them from the environment. I repeat the command. Now, this works because now 
next row is able to talk with Wave, go to Tower, take the credential, identify the registry, and make it run this uh, container. So this is just an example of how we can use and manage the, the, the credential many different repositories, private repository in my pipeline. So independently in the cloud on which we are running. This can be Docker App, Key, uh, Amazon ECR, Google Artifactory, Azure Container, etc. But let's say something more, more interesting or more exciting somehow. So we were saying that we have the capability to create a container on the fly just using a Docker file that I have into the model. So this is a very simple model. That model full main is doing anything, just running this small command. Here I now specify use this container image. Also in the next row config, there is very ba basic stuff, just use container, just use Docker. And the important piece is the Docker file that it is in, into the model. Of course, like, uh, like let's do this, alias nf, next row. If I do run demo, this fails because I don't have this tool in my computer, but again, now I can use wave, it's not Docker. And this is doing all the flow that was mentioned before. The wave plugin with Docker, uh, with next flow, find out the Docker file, send to wave, create, check the, the checksum of the Docker file, see if already exists a container for that Docker file, it exists, take it, otherwise, build on the fly, and then print the result of this task. I apologize for the, uh, the, the, the triviality of the example, but at least it's clear that we are running something into this computer. And also, this is nice because show, I can jump into my mailbox, I can see, I got a notification email that tells me what I have done, I built a container on the fly, the request ID, the user, and the repository from where it was downloaded, the container uploaded and downloaded by, by Nextflow. And by default, we are using uh, an ACR uh, registry, but of course, you can configure your own registry so that you can upload the container build by wave in your repositories. And then there is Docker file that was used, the build log, etc. Just to make another example, to show how to use a private repository that is not the default one, is enough to say wait. Uh, here I can specify build repository. Sorry. And then I want to use Docker IO, my own repository. Of course, now I have the same credential into Tower are the same that are used to, to access this repository. Now, save this file, run it again. NF from demo. Wait, wait. And this will do exactly the same thing. The only difference is pushing the, the, the container, the resulting container, into my own, uh, my own repository. I can jump into, again, into my in inbox and see. We can delete this one. We don't need that. Here it is. We have the second container. Okay. Now the only difference, they upload my own repository. So this, I think, is a great way to streamline no? the, the execution of the pipeline without having to take care to build the own stuff manually and upload in different, different registries depending you want to run the pipeline. And it is just one piece of the story because now, that we have this mechanism, we can do even something that's more cool. Because ideally, we would like even not think about Docker file. Because Docker file, at the end, is something that is not made for uh, pipeline developer. Why we should think about Docker file? Ideally, I would like to think pipeline, the depends of the pipeline, just using Conda. This is uh, the very basic RNSE pipeline that I usually use for, for demoing. There are some, some modules. Pass Q, index, multi QC. And here, as usual, I can, I, I can declare the dependencies of this task with Conda. No? We have the support of Conda since many years, many years, couple years maybe. 
uh, it worked pretty well. And what is the problem with Conda? The, problem, the main problem with Conda is tend to be this low, and above all, you have to add it so into your computer to make it run, to create the Conda environment. So this, this means that I cannot use this when I want to run this stuff into Amazon Cloud, Kubernetes cluster, unless I should install Conda somewhere, but it is quite complicated. But <clears throat> now that we have this capability to, to build container on the fly, what I can do, or what Nextflow can do, it can take this information, turn into a Docker file on the fly, and build the container for me. And this is what I can show you into another example that is, I think, the, the, the fourth. Here, <coughs> the, yeah, another very basic stuff, the just run command. The run command is simply next to run every async enough. That pipeline I was showing you with Wave. And then there is the configuration of the pipeline. Still, I'm running this my computer using Docker. But I'm saying to Wave, look, not look for the Docker file. Look for the, the conda definition. I think this is enough to, to automate all this process that next law will look for the uh, declaration of the conda, make a Docker file, and build on the fly. Let's run like this, simpler. I'll just take a few seconds more because, okay, there are more tasks, more containers to build with, with Conda, but it, it's quite efficient. I tried this with an F core pipeline, more than, more, more, more than one. And it's quite surprising how it's going to work well. And it managed to assemble 50 containers uh, in a few minutes and that while the pipeline is running. Here I could jump into a game my inbox somewhere. Okay, I think we already have the first container. Um, here it is. The nice thing that now we are using to build this, we are using Micro uh, Mamba. Sorry, this is quite a strange name, these ecosystem tools. But this is basically an alternative tool to, to Chrome that is faster, allows me to create also container very easily. And this is what we declare into the next flow task. So, this is the, the, the variable part, and then there is this mini Docker file that generated on fly. I create my container as the pipeline is going to be executed. Here there is the other one that is using FastQC. Then there is the other one using Salmon. Maybe it's missing what? MultiQC, the last one. And I'm quite excited at this possibility because this, I think, really freeing the, the pipeline developer to the need to maintain this collection of, of container. Uh, again, this is because uh, bio container is bad. Also, we see there is a lot of love. Uh, also, Amazon is providing support for bio container. But um, also, another use case that is with bio container, we cannot cover when you have pipeline tasks in which you want to use more than one tool. Instead, with by that by container, you have an association one-to-one -one with the tool and the container. So this means if you have a task that uses two tools, you have to create a custom image with that two tools or three tools. Instead of using this approach, it's just enough to, to add the, the tools that you want to use into your uh, task definition. That is this one. So here, you could put some or whatever whatever other tools, and next flow with we build this on the, on the fly. And, um, okay. Takes a bit more second to complete this, or it is the last one. Okay, but we can go ahead what this is going to finish. And, um, okay, and this is a one important uh, part of this story. So the ability to, to create container on the fly, either using Conda uh, Docker file or Conda recipe. And, but still, I know that there is still uh, some use cases in which this is not possible because, again, uh, maybe you prefer to use by container, or maybe you work in the regulated environment which you cannot rebuild every day container, or maybe you have to use some specific image uh, for because there is some specific validation on the container or the tool that you're going to use. So this is perfectly understandable. But see, there are use cases in which you want to use pre-built container, but adding some custom payload. And why? But for example, when we have now in Nextflow modules, we have a logger script, we would like to be able to 
access the local scripting of the module within the container. How to do this? Or maybe there are some other uh, users that want to use some custom tools with the uh, infrastructural tools within the container, like for example, for login. And this is what we are going to, to, to manage with what we call container augmentation. So again, uh, augmentation we saw also this morning, but uh, this is another term that was invented for, for, for this technology. And the idea is that what? <clears throat> to modify on the fly the container without rebuilding this. And to understand the, how does it work, we have to understand what is a container image uh, under the hood. In principle, very simple. A container is nothing more uh, a transformation of your Docker file into a list or tar file that contains the result of the each command in the Docker file. So when you run Docker, file, Docker build, this Docker file, this from something around this and that, each of these commands become a small or big uh, tar file with a checksum. And finally, the container is nothing more than a collection of this tar file with an index. It's a JSON file that say, okay, this Docker, Docker file, this Docker image contains all these layer. That's it. Then when we upload to the registry a container, we are just uploading this index file all the, the, the layer that are zipped file. And the, the pool is the, exactly the same thing. The pool is nothing more having the Docker client that make an HTTP request to the registry. So return the index, this JSON file, the Docker client read the index file and then start pulling all the, the layer one by one, unzip and mount in your computer. So the, 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 the scheme is very simple. Knowing this, we can easily modify this process, putting wave in the middle, they take your request and decide to do something else. So for example, we can take the, 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 the manifest for, for Ubuntu and this give us the configuration, the layer, but then when we are returning the final uh, manifest or the container, we can put an extra payload. So the Docker client start to follow the usual, the usual mechanism, start to pull the container layer from the original registry as any other Docker image. And then the last one instead is served by my wave. So we have this simple mechanism that change everything because allow us to do really interesting stuff, to modify container, uh, to modify container on the fly without having to rebuild. And this is bring us to another uh, to another problem that we have in cloud, uh, in, cloud uh, in pipeline that we deploy in the cloud, the problem with, with the surge, especially with the cloud surge. So there is a lot of effort uh, for cloud providers to provide better and better cloud storage, shared file system. Um, the problem is that uh, they are cool, but still is not the, the perfect solution because they uh, tend to be quite expensive. A lot of people don't want to use them and also add a lot of complexity in the, the configuration of the pipelines. Except what we want to do now, and what we are introducing also today, is another technology that we call FusionFS, it basically is a virtual file system optimized for next flow pipelines. Here, okay, maybe it's a bit exaggerated to call virtual file system, but the idea is very simple. So we start from the, 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 the point that AWS S3 is the best service solution for the cloud. It also S3, the, the industry standard, even across different cloud providers. It's cheap, it's fast, scale to infinite. You can have a you know, cleanup policy to, to, to remove the, 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 the data that you want after some, some time. Yeah, but whoa, you don't have to set up anything. It just works. Also, we have uh, you know, fantastic technology that we, like Kill that allows you to, to index the data. So it's really a, a universal storage for cloud. How we can solve the problem that we have with data pipelines and to make work better. So the main problem is that when we run the task within the container, I want to access some data in S3, the task that you are running is not able to talk in a native manner uh, with S3. So we need to use another piece of software and that is the AWS S3 command line to copy the data, run the task and upload the result. So every, time, every time that we run a task, we have to download, run, upload, uh, and upload, download, upload. Uh, for all the tasks that you have in your pipeline, 
It is is quite um, fragile in some cases. Also introduce a lot of overhead. It's not working well, but still we would like to use AWS S3 for this. So what's the idea? The idea is to use a thin layer that we can provision on demand into the container using Wave. And this thin layer is basically is a fuse driver that is op optimized for, for, for next flow. I know there is a lot of criticism about the fact that um, Fuse is not performant file system above, uh, above um, object storage, but the point is that it's not active file system if you want to implement all the POSIX semantic, file lock, or um, atomic file creation, this kind of stuff. But to work with Nextflow, we need to implement very basic operation. So the, we, we made a custom implementation of the Fuse driver to work with Nextflow, it taking advantage of the modern Nextflow segregating task in which each task works in its own, uh, its own work directory. So we can make some smart assumption to make the, 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 the task work, uh, work faster. For example, lazy loading input files or uh, 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 progressive uploading the result before the task is completed, something like this. And um, okay, I think I can show also demo of this, uh, of this, of this, of this tool. Um, I should uh, here another example. So three. Okay, the usual run that is the usual pipeline they run also before run RNS we we wait. And let's see what is how is that now the configuration file of the pipeline. I'm still running this, my computer using Docker. This time I specify a pre-built container. I don't want to build container on the fly, but I want to use S3 as the working directory of this pipeline. It this should be already something weird. You know, if you are using Nextflow, you know that this is not possible. Indeed, if I try to modify this, and uh, I let's delete this for a while. I delete this, I remove the fusion configuration, and try to run, you will get an error. Because I cannot run my, this task, my local computer using S3 because it's expected to work uh, in the local storage. Indeed, you even get a unsupported operation exception. Well, let's try again adding this, the support for fusion. I'm doing this way simple true. Okay. Indeed, now now it works because the container running my computer, also you see local executor, fusion enabled, but the container, the default container, the, the container was associated with this pipeline, is augmented with the fuse drive, the fusion driver, and then can run in the local computer, use the S3 like a local, local storage. Maybe. Please take a few seconds to download the container, to download the layer. Two spots. Nothing, nothing happened. A slow connection, maybe. Okay, let's jump into the Linux world. The Mac is not helping me. I change, I go into a virtual machine that I have on Amazon. We showcase example six. This is the same example. Okay, let's try it again. Please, the, the, the emulation of the Mac with Docker is sometimes a bit faulty. It is time much faster. Okay. And last step, multi we got it. So let's see the resulting directory. 
Usually, when we run this into a local computer, there is the work directory in this case. I don't type the work directory because I use the bucket. Indeed, I can verify this just using next flow log last. They give me the log of the last executed task work directory. And you will see that, indeed, showing you that I used to run this path line, my computer S3 as a local bucket. And uh, this is quite, quite cool because it opened new possibility uh, to have hybrid computation and to run pipelines, a remote cluster, not even, not, even, not even running next flow in that cluster. For example, one very, very interesting use case is to deploy the, the execution next flow with Kubernetes. And usually we had this kube command run that was quite a bit of mess. And the main problem is that you need to use a short file system into the Kubernetes cluster, mounting and provisioning uh, persistent volume, persistent volume claim, quite a mess. Instead, now, it's much, much simpler. I can show you this, how to run this pipeline into Kubernetes cluster into very simple manner. I think this is what we have here. Yeah, let's see the configuration from this. Here, we have always wave enable, fusion enable. I want to use now the executor that is Kubernetes and again, I'm using S3 as the work directory with the pipeline, and then the configuration of Kubernetes. This is the contact that I want to use, basically the cluster that I want to use, namespace, the service account. So it's a bit more configuration on Kubernetes side. But let's try to open another window to show instead uh, the pod running into the Kubernetes cluster. I should have access to a cluster here. This is tower stage. Uh, there are some namespaces I will want to use with demo. Here now is running anything. Kube CT uh, get pods. This is one, one pod, but it's not what we are running. So it was compared to eight years, eight, eight, year, eight days ago. And let's try to run this pipeline, my computer, into this Kubernetes cluster. So, again, cut run. I have here next flow run error music. Wait, wait. No, I don't need because it's already in the configuration file. That's it. I don't have this. Okay. And again, so we are running the pipeline. The pipeline is using Kubernetes Executor and transform. Ah, because now from the virtual machine, I don't have access to the cluster. I have to jump back into my local computer. Uh, forget the word. Uh, example eight. run. And the Kubernetes executor some may transform the jobs into pod, and now they should pop up into the cluster. Maybe, as before. Maybe it was not this the cluster? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, seems it's not that be working on my Mac. Hmm, let's try it again. Okay, there is a pod running. Oh, well, just be slow. Okay. It's a bit more the screen, but you, you should see the pod running on the right and the next row task running on the left. So, um, so this is a great way, I think, that allow us to, to switch the computation to different infrastructure with a much less uh, complexity to manage shared file system uh, across different cloud environments, Kubernetes, and 
And also, we have also another cool stuff, another problem that we have when we run next flow with cloud environment with Kubernetes is quite complicated to debug when something is failing. Uh, the, idea, the main idea with next flow for debugging is that something is crashing, I can jump into the work directory, work directory of the task and interactively debug the script that was created by next flow. But this, when I use S3 as work directory or another cloud object search, I cannot because is running into an isolated environment. So I don't have the possibility to replicate the, the, the computation. And so now, since we have this capability to run the container and also to mount remote file storage, what I can do is to replicate the execution of my computer. So now next flow there is a new command. This is not a new command, it's a plugin command or the uh, NFWay plugin is the bug task. And what is doing to this command is allow you to replicate the execution of the task in an interactive manner. I can take the idea of the task or the name of the task, let's say, yeah, this one, why not, the multi QC task. And next for plugin with the bug task, the ID, and this allows me to replicate the execution of this task by computer in an interactive manner. So it's mount, mounting the bucket, here, now I have access to the data. I can debug this stuff like if it is going to, it was executed in my computer. I can see the script that was generated, the error logs, the, the, the input files, if there were, uh, whatever. I can even re-execute the task to try to understand why it was not working. Wrong. And this, uh, I think, is going to be very useful. Uh, yes, well, because a very common problem that when something is crashing, it's a mess to understand why it was crashing. So instead, this way we can easily debug. Following the, the original idea on next flow. Okay. And um, I think here we are. So, ah, so here we have a small benchmark. So, Fusion is already available. Uh, we focus to make it stable. Uh, but also we are working to another iteration. This is a benchmark or a new version that we are going to release in the next, next days. Um, we made a comparison with different other, with the standard AWS S3 CP tool. Goofy is a popular fuse driver for S3. And comparing with Fusion running an ABS disk and also MVM disk. And you see that it is quite fast because we managed to, to take advantage of that uh, capability that we showed you before, uh, can be quite much faster than uh, playing a street, both in uh, downloading and uploading. And also we see a quite an interesting improvement performance when we use the MVN disk because, okay, our uh, in-memory disk essentially. So uh, this is another interesting idea that we want to explore to improve the performance of this system and the execution an extra pipeline using this kind of disk out of the box or in a much simpler way that is possible to do now. And uh, I think here we go. Um, support the platform for Fusion, we can run this Logger workstation like I show you uh, uh, now. Of course, we can use with AWS Batch, Kubernetes also, as I showed you. And the idea is to extend this also uh, HPC Batch scheduler, Flar, Grid Engine, all these family uh, 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 schedulers that are not for cloud, but still, I think it is quite interesting to have the possibility to use on-prem cluster with cloud, with cloud storage. Um, availability, both Wave and Fusion are uh, uh, as of today, as a preview technology, and everybody can use free or search next for it, our user. And uh, after the preview, we are planning to make this available for free to all academic and non uh, uh, professional user. And okay, I think I have done my part to sum up. The Play pipeline as scale with container is quite complex, especially when you need to manage different cloud environment, multi, multi cloud environment, and different private uh, registry. And because add a lot of complexity that make the process much more uh, unproductive. So the idea on this, on the idea on next flow was to empower developer without having friction to not have to interact with uh, infrastructural problem, but just hide all this plumbing and delegate to the underlying layer. I think we, with Wave, we are continuing to, to maintain this promise to streamline all the life cycle 
uh, containers uh, across different cloud without having to take care about this machinery. And also, I want to start, this is not a replacement for BioContainer, it's a fantastic project. Uh, I want, but just, we want to provide a better way to use existing container and augmenting the container with extra tool, the infrastructural tool on demand, like we're showing you in the case of Fusion or other tools that are required by the execution of the power plant, depending on the user, or even build container on the fly. Another important point, I think that this is maybe the time to rethink the use of container into pipelines because for a long time we, could, we, we, we confused containers like a package manager. And it is, it is not. We, we, the package manager like Conda or other tools like Spark are much better because they really allow you to track the dependencies and so the metadata of the pipeline or the tool that you use in pipeline. So coming back also to the, to the discussion about uh, provenance that we were doing this morning. Instead, the container is not a proper way because we have just this blob that contains a lot of tools. It is difficult to track the versioning. And with the way we can keep this component in their own place, we can use the uh, Conda or similar tool to package and to create, to maintain the dependencies and still use their Docker just to create the, uh, the support for the execution of these, uh, of these tools. Um, okay, thank you for your attention. Uh, also, want to thank the opportunity to say thank you uh, to all the engineering team that worked on this project. It was quite complicated stuff that we did in a few months. Above all, I want to thank uh, Jordan for making exceptional work with the Fusion, Fusion Driver. It was an amazing uh, achievement that we managed to, to make and probably work in, uh, with Jordi with this. Also, Ben, Jorge, Adiani, and Matteo working to uh, wave technology to and uh, next flow to enable, to enable the implementation of this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Paolo. I think most of us will agree that you've got nerves of steel to do a live demo like that with so many moving pieces in front of a live audience. So uh, <laughs> congrats. Uh, we've got lots of questions here. Um, I'm just going to try and pick a few and I'll try and go in roughly kind of chronological order to follow the different parts you talked about. Um, so one from Chris Cheshire right near the start of your talk, you were talking about Nextflow plugins um, and he was asking where is the plugin logic executed? Is it on the head node or is it on one of the... The plugin, kind of, logic, the plugin <laughs> logic, uh, the plugin or the... the... The plugin, where does it run? The plugin logic, okay, the core plugin logic is we keep into the main Nextflow repository and non-core plugin, like for example, the plugin for SQL live into the uh, next, the, the, the project repository. Maybe at some point we will move also the core plugin in their own repository, but now it's much simpler to, to, to for the development uh, simplicity to keep all together the core plugin at least. Um, moving on to Wave, most of the questions were about Wave. Um, is there a way to download images via Wave for clusters without internet access? Yeah, this is a good point. I remember we talked about this. Um, so Wave um, is not inventing a new way, a new way to pull images or containers. So it essentially, is compatible like any other. Uh, container registers. So in principle, you could even create the wave images and then pull offline. Maybe it can be a bit complicated, but I think we can refine a bit this process to make um, a command or plugin that uh, you run the preview the, the, the pipeline with the, the option that also I was talking before and can create all the download of the container that you want to use offline. Essentially, yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, Venkat asks, asks uh, what happens if the build fails? Oh, you got an error. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got an application. Uh, this is why, this is the main reason why uh, we added the, the, the email notification mainly, not because I, I want to have the pop-up of the, 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 the completion of the, the, the container, but to have the log of the failure of the container. This is a way that allows you to see what was failing and then rebuild. Um, okay, uh, um, the suggestion is not build from scratch container with this, 
try before locally, and when you are more or less confident that it's going to be uh, runnable, you then deploy with the pipeline. All right, now we've got the big one, and lots of people have asked questions which are quite similar to this. Um, so when Wave builds containers from a conda definition, but I guess also uh, by, by any Docker file as well, um, is the image that is built, is that stored by hash, or is yeah, that kept yeah, around? This is, um, this is um, quite aggressive caching mechanism, different layer. Okay, part the local, the local part is also a caching uh, wave level, then we see if the, the, the Docker file change over time and we can keep a copy of the, the image, but also for each layer, there is another separate cache. Actually, you can specify next to a configuration another Docker repository where store all the caching for all the layer built for your container. So yes, there are different level of caching. And can you expand on how that impacts the reproducibility of running pipelines? So with the, can this caching, does that solve the problem of reprodu reproducibility? So if you run the same pipeline six months later and something has changed in the dependency tree, uh, will you still be running no, the same? because at the end, the, the reproducibility should be guaranteed by the package manager. So once you have the full reproducibility of the dependencies, provided by the tool, we are just packaging the same tools into our container. I think it should be not a big problem. Um, Tony asks, would it be possible to create um, a, a wave container with Conda, but for multiple Conda packages? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, exactly what I was mentioning before. So when you have the next slope, uh, I can show you uh, quickly. Uh, where is it? Here, or you provide multiple packages, one after another, or you can specify the usual cone, the recipe file, and specify the part of the file here, and then we are building with the file. So you can make as complex as you want. Actually, in f I have my, many more of these packages, and it works in a brilliant manner. Um, and then finally on Wave, uh, some people using Singularity, uh, is, will, will this impact people using Singularity? Can yeah, they make yeah, use of this? Compatible also, yes, because Singularity is able to convert Docker images to Singularity images, so we are not really, it's the same process, basically. Uh, singularity is uh, wave like a container registry. Um, nearly there. Uh, <laughs> question about Fuse now, so moving on from Wave onto Fuse. Um, Will, sorry, yeah, Fuse or Fusion, will it work with any AWS-like storage? So Is it, yeah, we, want, uh, we haven't tried yet with Manu or other compatible uh, implementation S3, but the goal, we want to make compatible, yeah, uh, with all the implementation S3 that are out there, above all Manu. I just realized I missed one with Wave, sorry. One more with Wave. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you have Wave place containers in different registries at the same time, so Docker Hub and Key, for example, at the same time. If they, there is multiple be at the same age at the same time, but there is a um, synchronization mechanism. So the first that first request the build, the other just wait for the same image to be completed. Basically, they just wait. And will Fuse support other cloud providers? Mm, absolutely. Do you already support for Fusion or we? So Fusion. It's a good question. Um, they mean that uh, we need to decide if we want to have native support for other cloud provider or to have a kind of gateway across S3 protocol. But the, the goal in any anyhow is to support all cloud platform. We don't know if we want to have native support for Fusion and Google Search, let's say, or Fusion use a gateway S3 a tool to, to store that into Google Storage. But yeah, the, goal, the final goal is to support all cloud. Um, that's all for questions. Um, I believe there's been some activity on the Nextflow blog while you've been talking. Um, so if, if people are more in, interested in reading more about Wave, please do check out the, the Nextflow blog. All right, Welcome. <laughs> um, for, for more details there and, and check out Twitter as well. Thanks. Thank you.